I've always, you know, my job has always been working with young people mm. and I've seen the impact of lack of representation in the schools, mm -hmm. you know, in the community and so on. And I've realized that a number of our kids, they tend to lack self-confidence and yes. self-esteem. And with that, there are lots of different ripple effects, you know, from the lack of self-esteem and self, you know, confidence and so mm -hmm. on. Welcome back to the show, and I'm joined by Saffron Jackson, creator of Zuri Dolls. Saffron, welcome back again. Toya, if you don't mind, can we just put you aside for a quick second again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she doesn't mind. <laughs> so listen now, what would you say then are to consumers then in understanding the power of how and where they spend? Um, and I'm talking about like Toya, while at the same time is for the children. But isn't there a mindset about the parents? Because the parents normally will decide. Yes. The children will say, I want this, I want that. But there's a mother, the father, who will decide. Has there been any challenge with that? Yes. I think there's a huge, huge stigma in yes. our community right. when it comes to black toys and black... In fact, I've spoken to a number of uh, retailers yes. who sell like ethnic toys and so on. And they, they will tell you that quite often the parents do not want their children to have a black doll. Sometimes it's the kids who are begging their parents to buy the black doll. Wow. The parents usually will go for the Barbie, you know, wow. the white dolls. Wow. Because it's in our psyche, wow. which, is, which, is, which, is, which is really sad wow. in this day and age. This is mm. 2017. And we still are so mentally enslaved mm. because we still believe subconsciously that the white doll looks much better than a black doll. Well, we grew up in Jamaica, Saffron, and we know the saying that many people normally say, what well, black no good? Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's a mentality. It's not, it, it's, it is something which has been, if you, if you don't have a clear idea of your identity, it is something that is even instilled in us subconsciously Precisely. from home. from home and without even realizing. Yes. And we pass this on to our children. Mm. And that is one of the reasons why black dolls are so expensive because it's all about supply and demand. Again. And because most people are not buying the black dolls, retailers do not want to stock them. Of course. Because it's all it's, about money. It's all about business. Absolutely. So they're not it's into all it about for the sentiment. Precisely. But you're into it for the sentiment I and the am, passion. I am, because I know the importance of a black doll to my child yes. and what I would like my child to become in the future because I want her to be proud of who she is mm. from a very young age. Mm. You know, I, I don't know if you've seen this video about the doll test. Well, yeah, well, as we, as we mentioned it earlier in the opening, and we're going to talk about that as well. I mean, and, uh, well, since we're at it now, I mean, that was something really phenomenal where you saw... Uh, the question is... Kids as young as three, four years old. Why do you think they were saying that? Show me the doll that is the nice doll. As I said, it goes back to that. It goes back to the home. To the home. It goes back to the media. It's society on a whole. Yes. So in the home, sometimes we subconsciously do things without even realizing. The girl, the blackie. Yes. Eh? Her hair not look good. Eh, I hear toughy. Mm. Eh, I hear coursey. These kind of things mm. that we say to our kids without even realizing what we're doing. We're damaging them and their self-esteem. Mm. Because you're saying that to a black child. Yes. Who has kinky hair. Yes. Yeah, who has a black, you know, dark skin tone. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, oh, she's blacky. Yes. And she not look good. And these kind of things. And we subconsciously yes. send the message to our kids that black is not beautiful. Right. I, I want to dig a bit deeper. I'm going off script now. I want to go dig a bit deeper. 
Because do you see the children more wanting the doll than the parents? Yes. But at the same time, in the doll test, the children were wanting the, the white, white doll, doll. Which is very interesting. I think, to be honest, Toya has an edge over many black dolls yes. because of her old Jamaican identity, accent yes. and Jamaican identity. So it's not just a black doll. It's not just it's a black a doll. And that is something that people right. and the kids are right. buying into. Right. Because most children, interesting. Are, are, or I wouldn't say most, but lots of kids like to be associated with anything Jamaican. Yes. So the fact that the doll talks, I've never ever been anywhere where a child doesn't want the doll. Yes. Every single child that comes to my stand always wants the doll. White children as well? All children, mm -hmm. all children. In fact, when I was, when I got my samples or my prototype, the first set of kids who saw my doll were white mm -hmm. because I, at the time I was teaching <coughs> yeah. and, I, and, I, and I brought it into my lesson and I was just having a general chit chat with these students. Yes. And they were absolutely over the moon. Mm -hmm. And these are boys I'm talking about because mm -hmm. I used to teach boys. And they were over the moon. They loved it. They just wanted to hear the phrases over and over. But they weren't buying and they it. Kept... The boys didn't want it, though. <laughs> no, they didn't want it for themselves, <laughs> but they loved the whole, loved notion, the whole, the whole notion of it, yeah. um, being able to talk in Jamaican. Because yeah. one of the things that I find when I was teaching was that every time you walk into a class and you meet a new set of students, and even the old students, yeah. Miss, can you say something in Jamaican? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Say something Jamaican for us. And they just love it. And they yes. just love the Jamaican talk and the Jamaican accent. And I think that is what Toya has that many other black dolls don't. And that is what gives it the edge in the market mm. at the moment. Do you think as well that, as you mentioned in the classroom, misspeak Jamaican, do you think that young black children in this country, you have been there in the teaching classroom, do you feel like they have an issue with really their identity and that's why they, they just want to gravitate to that cultural aspect of yes. something else yes and the reason why they want to gravitate towards that culture of jamaica is because jamaica is popular jamaica is like a brand mm. and so because it's such a brand so to speak you have the usain bolt you have the bob marley mm. they want to associate with something that's positive to them mm. and that's the problem with the lack of representation in our culture these kids can't see anyone that they can say, okay, I want to be like the Oprah Winfrey. Mm. If most of the times we have to be looking outside, outside. of the UK so that's in order to, to find positive... The Silver show, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we have to be, you know what I mean? Yeah. We have to be looking outside of it yeah. to find these positive role models within our community, well, you're right, which you're is right. sad. You're right, because if anybody check on their internet now and they look at black couples, you always see their show in the States. Absolutely. Wow. The Beyonce of this yes. world, the Oprah Winfrey of yes. this world, the Michelle Obama, yeah. you know, President yeah. Obama. These are the kind of people that we see. Denzel it's Washington. Very, yes. You know, see, yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't find them readily in the UK. I'm not saying they're not here. They are here. But they are not out there. They are not popular. And these are the kind of things that people, kids want to see. You find the footballers. Mm. You find the musicians. So they can obviously readily associate themselves to it because they see mm. themselves in these people. And so they're the closest thing mm. that they ever come and, you know, that they'll ever be like somebody in their mind. Somebody said this to me the other day and I actually it challenged me when they say, are there any black politicians who are married to a black person? <laughs> and I said, and I started to think, and I started to think, Saffron, and ladies and gentlemen, you can even think with me. And Saffron, I'm finding it hard to really... That's the point. That's the or point. Or in the profile, but even, even sense. myself, I was thinking the other day: Who are some of the black positive people within the UK that mm. I can readily, you know, identify with, you know, and refer a child to? And it's yes. so difficult. Yes. You can think of, of course, Diane Abbott, and you know, <laughs> a few others. Right, you know what right, I mean? But right. it's just so difficult. Well, the, well, ladies and gentlemen, this is getting much deeper <laughs> now, and uh, I'm going to take a quick break again. And when we come back, we're going to look at racial cultural representation in toys on the mainstream and a bit about the doll test. And I'm going to go back one more time and ask, who is Saffron actually? Where are you in a little more Zuri double? We're going to ask who actually is Saffron.
if a, if a parent has a child in this country and they are concerned about the child and their own status, obviously they go and seek legal advice. Yes. But sometimes, like we all know, some solicitors obviously um, don't give actually, um, they don't have any client's best interest. Yes, yes. Or sometimes they're not actually, um, what should I say, competent, mm -hmm. you know, enough to actually them into give the right advice. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the show, and as you can see, I've got I'm joined with Toya as well, um, Saffron. Um, we spoke a lot a while ago, and um, thanks for coming back. So you're not going off to sell some toys <laughs> and some zoo and stuff like that. In our opening segment, we talk about the doll test again. And if I start a sentence with the words "representation in dolls on toys matters because," I repeat, "representation in dolls on toys matters because." How would you end that sentence? Because representation matters because we want our kids to feel as if they are valued in mm -hmm. our society. Mm -hmm. So if they see themselves on the shelves, mm -hmm. if they see themselves in the media, mm -hmm. if they see themselves, you know, anywhere they, on the billboards mm -hmm. and all these things, they will feel important, they, they're important. Yes. They too are important. Yes. They should feel that way. And every child deserves to feel that way. Yes. And so to me, it shows a value. It says, I am important, that's what it says. I am very, very important, yeah. and I'm valuable in society, and I can make a contribution to society, and I'm, you know, I'm not just there to make numbers, mm -hmm. I'm there to contribute positively mm -hmm. in society as well. And do you think children are getting to, like the mainstream, not, not the mainstream media, the mainstream school, I mean, your school, whatever, do you think young children, and we're talking about black children, mm -hmm. um, I don't like to use the word ethnic minority, but for the sake of political correctness, mm -hmm. BME kids, are they come, are we reaching to the point where the school are actually teaching them, um, encouraging them about their identity? Hmm. Well, they're doing much better than they're what they were doing. Better. Mm. in the past because at least now they recognize Black History Month yeah. and most schools will try to incorporate <clears throat> positive mm. role models and so on and you know identify things that black people have created and all yes. these things yes. during this time frame so of course it's helping ch children to identify with themselves mm -hmm. and so on which is really really good but there's far more that needs to be done yeah. for example we need to see more BME as senior leaders in schools. In schools. As we need to see, and precisely, leaders. and deputy principals and heads of departments and all this. We need to see more of that mm. in our schools. We also need to see, we need to see more of them on the TV. Yes. You know, as anchors, news anchors, and, yes. and all these kind of things. Yes. We need to see them in the parliament as well. Yes. It shouldn't be just Diane Abbott or whoever else is there, the, you know, the people, five people you can count on your fingers. Yeah. We need to see more people being represented, yeah. black people or BME being represented right across all spheres of society yes you know and this is the only way where our kids will feel empowered and feel as if they too have something to contribute mm -hmm. and they are valuable within our society well i'm going to go into this point now by asking so tell me now where did this burning desire and this passion came from and who is saffron jackson no we have gone all the way i'm talking about zoe <laughs> zoe toy learn we know everything about toy but who is Saffron? I mean, you have been involved with so many different things. <laughs> well, who is Saffron? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to find out yourself? <laughs> well, Saffron is actually um, from Jamaica. Yes. Um, she spent most of her life in Jamaica. She mm. attended school, teacher training in Jamaica and yes. so on. But most of her working life has been spent in the UK. Mm -hmm. And um, 
she's very passionate about working with young people mm -hmm. and kids. In fact, she was the one of the founders for the Jamaican Inspired UK. Yes. And also she was one of the first representative for the Jamaicans throughout the diaspora, you know, and That's so the on. diaspora organization. The diaspora oh. organization, you know, within the UK. Yes. And she was integral in creating the first Jamaican Diaspora Future Leaders Conference yes. in yes. 2009. Yes. Um, she's a She's also um, a firebrand. <laughs> she's also, <laughs> as you know, a teacher by profession. Yes, yes, um, yes. Really enjoys her job. You know, yes. had excellent results while she was a teacher. Mm. Um, you know, considered to be grade one teacher in, in many, many, many areas. Mm. Um, graded by Austin and, 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 you know, within her school settings as yes. well and so on. And um, she's worked with lots of young offenders. And yes. that's one of the reasons as well. I think um, where, you know, she believes that empowering young people is very important yes. because a number of the kids that she worked with while she worked with young offenders, she realized that it was because of their low self-esteem yes. and lack of confidence mm. while they got involved in crime in the first place. Now you talk a lot about um, from the, the Jamaica side and um, in school they say to you speak um, Jamaican. But this is not just Jamaican Absolutely children. Absolutely not. not okay. We're not just talking about Jamaican kids right. here. We're talking about black kids on a whole, yes. African, other Caribbean islands mm. and so on. And a number of the kids that I've met over the years, you realize that, I mean, of course, you know, we can't, we can't um, ignore the fact that a number of them are also coming from dysfunctional families. Right. But a number of the kids that are involved in gangs and crime, it stems from the fact that they had low self-esteem mm -hmm. and so they felt that they had to get involved in crime or with gang yes. in order to feel a part of society and in order to feel welcome as a, yes. you know as a group and so on and so these are some of the things that really pushes me and motivates me yes. to actually create the brand Zuri, because I do not want my child to end up in that situation. We don't know what the future holds, yes, yes. but of course I have a responsibility and I want my child to feel empowered from a very young age. I want her to understand that she is beautiful regardless mm. of who she is. You know, I don't want her to go out there bleaching her skin and yes, all these yes, kind of things yes, yes. in order to feel um, accepted, accepted by society. I want her to be accepted the way she is. So therefore we can say that Zuri in a certain way is evolving possibly, if not already, a foundation. Absolutely, Right. absolutely. Right. I've told several people that Zuri is not just a business for me, right. it's also a cause. Yes. So I will be fighting two to nail. So it's a movement. It is a movement. Fantastic, that, that's, 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 you know that's I mean? powerful. It is. Now, you, at one point you wanted to go back home. I did. I did. What happened? <laughs> and I still want to. <laughs> I still have intention you, you, and hope to go you back into. On your way to. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I mean, I wanted to work in Jamaica, yeah. work with young people, you know, within the education sector and so on. But unfortunately, due to the job situations in mm. Jamaica, I had to return because yes. I just could not find a job that was suitable for me at the yes. time. And, uh, you know, of course, being dual citizenship, yes. I just decided to return to the UK. But do you know what, ladies and gentlemen, and this is very powerful, Saffron, is that there's a thing called providence. Providence, they call it the hand of God, the unseen hand of God. Because if you went back to Jamaica, we might not have a Zuri. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> they always say God knows best, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> you know, they, they, and there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about in, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. I mean to say, wherever you are, you build at the same time. Yep. And it's so strange because you're about to launch Zuri in Jamaica. Yes. So therefore, in a way, I think the point I'm actually trying to say, ladies and gentlemen, is that wherever you are, wherever you are whatever position you're at, Make hay while the, the grass, sun shines. While the sun exactly. shines. <laughs> and also, and this is one thing I always say is this. Do what you have to do till you can do what you really, really, really want, want to, to do. do. Absolutely. You know? There you and go. This not, and this is not the Spice Girls. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Saffron, one more thing. Um, so what's the next plan with Zuri? Well, if you don't the, mind, it's, it's huge. No, no, no. I, I, I will not. <laughs> You there are certain things. First. Can I get I, something here first? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might want to know that um, here first that the Talking Rasta Bear will be launched in 
August. Jarrah. So <laughs> you first to know that. In fact, yeah, I have the bear with me. So you, if you would like, you can show it first on yes. your program. Yes. So that will be launched first in August. Okay. And also, Zuri will be launched in the USA as okay. well by the ending of this month. So mm -hmm. it will be on Amazon. Um, and eBay USA. Yes. It will also be on Amazon here in the UK. Okay. And um, plans are underway as well for a major toy company. Yes. Who is actually, you know, in the process okay. of um, getting Zuri in their in 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 their in well, their shops. Well, what I can pick up is she's stuttering, <laughs> stuttering because she don't she want to doesn't give, much want to give away time. too much it's information. But you know, one yes, of my but plans are on the yeah, way. One of my commitments <laughs> to the Silburn Show is that once a guest comes on the show, we'll be partnering with them right through. <laughs> Absolutely. So from now on, anything that you find that we, we can always, you know, something's out there. We'll push it on the Silver yep. Show. When you make a lot of money, you put it in the Silver <laughs> Show bank account as well. But we're all busy. We're all absolutely, together, you know absolutely. I mean? day, it is you know? all about business and it's all about supporting people in our community. Yes. And that's something I believe in yes. strongly. Yes. In fact, I will be working with a few companies in Jamaica. Yes. Like, for example, some of the clothing for the door line will yes. be made in Jamaica. Yes. The sandals will be made in Jamaica and so on. So it's about partnering and supporting yes. our own within our community. Because and you all also of that. do some business with some dress and some stuff yes. like that. Yes. So that will be yes. yes. So the clothing for the for the for the dolls will be will be made yes. in Jamaica. Wow. You know, wow. and things like that. Well listen ladies and gentlemen, we could keep going all night. <laughs> Absolutely. And Toya, we haven't even get into Toya that much as well, you know. <laughs> Um, so from before we go, what would you say is your mantra? I always ask this question. What is your key quote which inspires you? What do you want to share? Yeah. What I, is your, yeah. I have two, really, Please. to be honest. Yes. And the two is hard work and determination are always the key to success. Mm. Anything at all you put your mind to, if you work hard at it, yes. really, really hard at it, you will achieve it eventually. So it's not gumption by saying, I can do this, I can no. do this. No, you have to put the work in. You have to put the work in. It's not going to happen yeah. overnight. <laughs> not just you know? dream, you've got to wake up. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. It's <laughs> stop it right there. And we get into the one, but it's sometimes we say, I dream. I dream, I dream, I dream, I dream. You've got to dream, dream, dream. But guess what? Until you wake up. Absolutely. That's the action, isn't it? Put yes. Put your clothes, brush your hair. Get it's out good there. to dream. No, no question about <laughs> yes, that. Yes, yes. Dream, dream, dream. Yes. But work, work, work as yes. well <laughs> to ensure that that dream becomes a reality. Fantastic. You know. And the other one that I always, always remind myself of is that I will never allow my past to dictate my future. Mm -hmm. So I may not be coming from a wealthy background. I'm yes. from humble beginnings, but it doesn't mean that that's how I have to end my life. Right. So with that in mind, my ideas are huge. I'm yes. very ambitious. Yes. And I will work as hard as I possibly can in order to achieve the goals that I want to achieve. Wow. So ladies and gentlemen, the last one was my past don't determine my future. And my spin to that all the while is don't be a slave to the past, but be a liberator of the future as well. You know. Indeed. Saffron, listen, I want to thank you so much for joining us. It is a pleasure, pleasure. definitely. And of course, let us keep the communication going. Yeah, let us keep and I'm sure I'll be back. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I definitely, will be back. Definitely. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for joining. But as we know, and listening to Saffron today and listening to the whole aspect of representation and identity, one of those key factors which I always speak about on my show and in all my Facebook Live, I always talk about identity. Toya, as we can see, represents identity. Many people want to get attached, but not just because of the wagwan, but it's about the cultural aspect, the representational aspect, not just a black doll, but what the representation is. What Saffron says further, Zuri is not just a business, it's a movement, it's a passion, it's a journey. And therefore, that is also something encouraging, encouraging to you, to me, that in whatever you do at the same time, Always ensure that your dream, your passion, have a legacy which is left behind. I see a legacy. My God, I almost ripped her hair apart. <laughs> you see how real she is? A legacy. A legacy has been established and we should be, as I always say, legacy bearers. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on The Silburn Show. See you next time. And of course, remember to like, subscribe to our Silburn Show YouTube channel, Twitter, Instagram, and all the social media aspects. And see you next time. Thank you. I'm Saffron Jackson and I am the founder and creator of Zuri Dolls and the first talking Jamaican doll which is Toya and we had the privilege of sitting with Silborn on the Silborn show today. So we're encouraging everyone to subscribe to Silborn show on YouTube, um, Twitter, Facebook and um, Instagram and just try and support as much as you can. Yeah, you know, because he's doing a fantastic job by raising the profile of black or ethnic BME and other, other, other people throughout um, the community, highlighting them and raising their profiles. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silver and Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it, but important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comment, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So, as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you, I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much, see you next time. I had, what's your, what temperature are you here? Toya, <laughs> poor <laughs> Toya and her hair, he all over the place. Turn, turn around, turn around, make sure you talk, make sure talk to the people. <laughs> So okay, Toya. So Toya will talk for you. That's awesome. Now that is Zuri, and I've got a secret weapon up, and this is a special. Can I say saffron? Yes. Okay, we got the dreadlocks here now, isn't it? The Rasta beer. Rasta beer. <laughs> so tell us about the Rasta beer. This, this, this is now. This is Johnny. This is and Johnny. Johnny is for you know it's unisex, so it's for boys and girls. Okay. okay. And um, it's for more the younger kids, you know, because it's a soft toy. But it also talks, and it talks in Jamaican as yeah, well. Yeah. So I can Johnny can talk like me. <laughs> I'm here, Johnny now. Okay. So. And um, I can give you another one. Another one of Johnny, yeah. Topic is my amigo. Why are you? Me, me, I'm Johnny. No, me.